Okay, so to remove the wiper arms, I guess these only go this far. And I don't feel any release buttons or anything. I guess that's how they come off. What I'm using is a flathead screwdriver as a pry bar because that's how they're supposed to be used, as everybody knows. Okay, that wasn't too bad. And this is, of course, the hose for the uh, for the windshield washer uh, fluid. And it is plugged here to this other hose. There we go. Okay. So, this assembly is out without much of a fight. Awesome. And uh, I'm also go going to, um, let me bring you in, so you can see the, uh, the windshield washer fluid hose is connected through here, goes into the firewall. So I am going to remove it for now. Keep it over here, somewhat out of the way. And I'm pro I am probably going to replace this. It's just standard hose. I'm sure I can buy at the auto parts store. And uh, next, I'm going to remove the other wiper arm. Start loosening the windshield wiper motor. So all of this can be disconnected and removed. Okay, so here's a before and after, and I don't know how well you can tell the difference. This one I, I cleaned and uh, turned out pretty, pretty decent. This one is still dirty as it came off the car. And you can see there's all kinds of stuff built up over the, the years, even a little bit of surface rust but they seem to clean up pretty, pretty well. And uh, they're still very supple and pliable. And uh, I think they're gonna be okay. So after I'm done with these, I'm gonna tackle the, the screens and it's gonna be a very similar procedure just give them a good uh, cleaning and then maybe a coat of paint, at least on the exposed, uh, exposed side. And, uh, and that should be it for those. I also um, cleaned the uh, little bolts that hold these things in place. And um, 
these are the ones for the uh, for these rubber weather stripping pieces. I'm, I am probably going to give them a, a coat of paint because there's only so much stuff that I can clean. And uh, again, these are 40 plus years old, so I'm going to give everything a coat of paint. And as far as I can tell, there's one, two, three. That one down there is going to be, a, I think, a bear, but we'll see what happens. There. And the windshield wiper motor lives right here behind this wiring there's a couple connectors and another one here and this is the the motor so i'm going to clean it up make it look good okay so i'm using this 3 8 wrench to very slowly try to remove this nut these things are coated with this gunk to prevent leaks, I guess. So here's one of the nuts. The other ones are really coated with this stuff. So I have to somehow remove this before I can fit the, the wrench in there. I think I'm going to have to try to get a a socket in there. Yes, yes. This one down here is totally coated with that stuff. Oh, and this thing has um, some kind of a, a bracket for the um, one of the hoses attached to it. I don't even think I can get this in there. So let's remove the extension. Sorry. I'm trying my best to stay out of the picture, but unfortunately, I have to do this. Yeah, this is just super coated. Uh, <laughs> and there's hardly any room in here, which makes this project even more entertaining. There we go. Wow. And for your benefit, I am going to uh, clip this quite a bit so you don't look at this. Now, let's see if this bracket, wow, look at that, popped right off. <laughs> there we go. Okay. As much as I would like to remove this one, I don't think I can because these usually have a nut on the other side and to get to that one you have to usually remove the dashboard so and there's four of them and now we have to go to the other side i'm going to spare you all that grief i'm going to share with you what i've been doing here for the last 10 minutes or so i removed this portion of the wiper assembly sitting over there i don't know if you can hear there's a ton of leaves and stuff down there and I've been trying for the longest time. Ah! Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Look! Oh! I just wanted to show to you that that happens sometimes. I think there's just dirt on leaves down there. Yeah, I don't, not able to fish anything else that's metallic. And I'm going to run the vacuum down there. Yep. Unfortunately, I cannot do the same thing on the other side, and I lost a socket down there. I just wanted to share that experience with you because sometimes things really fall into that void back there. So...
Okay, about an hour later, got a lot of this loose stuff, but of course I'm going to give another vacuuming and uh, make it look better so I can determine where I need to uh, keep chipping away at uh, sealant. This plate cannot be removed, so I'm going to have to clean it best I can and then paint and coat all of that in place. Here's the other one, pretty rusty, as you can see. There we go. Okay, so I've been cleaning a lot of this stuff here, and mainly I use an old chisel. We still want to make sure that it's somewhat sharp and really uh, what you're going to be doing is scraping a whole lot and removing as much of this stuff as possible and you always manage to find more i don't know why th why that is but uh, you're going to miss a ton of this stuff and the thing is if you use like sanding paper that's going to get clogged log really fast so the best tool for this I think is the um, is the uh, chisel there, there is a purpose for this stuff you want to seal this uh, opening here but my plan is to use first of all this car is, for me is not going to be a daily driver so I'm not concerned about that but Nevertheless, I'm going to use some uh, Flex Seal to do the same or a better job than the seam sealer they use. So again, this is just going to be hours of work. I've been making a lot of progress, but as you can see, there's always more to be done. Other than that, what I'm going to do next, and for this you're going to need some kind of a thin saw is I'm going to start removing some of the uh, excess material here to make a very nice even edge. Same thing here is if you look at this piece here, I don't know if the camera will show that. You actually have firewall and then you have this crossover piece and they're of course bonded together. But then you have this kind of like, it's almost like a remnant of something. And uh, again, I want to trim it, remove the excess. And, um, and that would be that. And if you reach under some of these panels, you, you see um, excess of like that panel adhesive that is just oozed out of there and they just left it, <laughs> let it be. But uh, I'm going to carefully cut this to the best of my ability, ability and then with uh, a sanding pad, I am going to um, make sure that it looks really, really nice and has a nice finish. This one here is going to be tricky because there is a, a little curve. So I don't want to start redesigning the whole thing. So 
this means we're going to be trimming this one small piece at a time like so and this may require several passes and again you're going to need something like a a rasp or something like that to really knock a lot of this stuff down and it is going to be a ton of work I mean this is going to take hours if not days but it's so worth it at the end we go get a file or a rasp to see if i can address this now here i have a pretty aggressive rasp so you want to be somewhat careful with it it can remove a lot of material really fast Also want to have one of these files with a rounded side so you can actually get in there and this is a lot finer so you can do a little more detail work the only thing is they get clogged fast This corner here instead of making a, a gentle curve I'm just gonna go 90 degrees or thereabouts I see from that angle how there is excess material down here and again based on how much time you want to spend doing the detail work you may want to remove it if it's really visible you're gonna to have to And finally here, I'm going to get some uh, coarse sandpaper, start dressing a little more detail here. But again, this is hardly from done because I still want to go over it many times and uh, make sure that it's as good as I can get it. And then of course we still have all this stuff that still remains and has to be removed. Now here, what I'm going to use, I'm going to cut a piece of this 80 grit paper. I'm just going to use it dry and I'm going to start detailing some of these areas. And if you need to sand areas like here where there's leftover paint and it's maybe a little uneven, I wouldn't go with something like 80 grit 
it is just too aggressive for that. So this is basically body work. So you have to uh, be, mi be mindful of that fact and, uh, and be careful. <laughs> In some areas also you may need to uh, add a little bit of bondo or glazing putty but uh that's kind of more toward the end when you're really doing some fine sanding maybe even wet sanding to get everything ready for paint and don't forget to run the vacuum on a regular basis <laughs> Also, you may want to wear a respirator. A lot of fine dust flying around this fiberglass. So, do as I say, not as I do. And I'm going to continue addressing some of these areas. I'll show you a little more detail as far as this portion is concerned, just because it is so obvious. But other than that, it just become re becomes repetitive. So I think you get the gist. So much stuff under here. Let me see if I can chip some of that away. this huge chunks well, that's good it's still going to need a lot of a lot of work but i'm making some progress over here, I still have a, a little bit of material to remove, but again, I hope you're getting the, uh, the general idea of what it, this entails. And again, once you get up close and personal, you may see some of the uh, extra material. I'm going to remove as much as I can because Otherwise, that kind of stuff drives me crazy. But again, you have to know when to uh, say that's good enough. So I'm going to keep chipping away at this thing, literally. And I hope this is somewhat helpful to you guys. And uh, like I said before, and I keep saying, and it's true, it's a very slow going process. Okay, so this was the template and as you can see i had a kind of cut it too short so i had to improvise and that's the beauty of this there's no there are no rules but you can see the difference between the sharp angle here and this more gentle kind of sweeping curve and i think it looks so much better you can see some of my some of the lines that I had drawn and I just followed that. I didn't use the saw because it is, it is very awkward to be cutting here. So I just used the, the rasp and that one did the, uh, the trick. I still have to finalize a few little details by uh, sanding some more, make it really smooth. But again, that's, uh, that's uh, an option if you want to if you want to do something like that, just to give it a more subtle, intentional touch. And again, you don't have to do any of this. I mean, this is totally optional. Uh, the car will run just fine um, with or without this uh, detailing. It's just when you open the hood, if you're at a, 
at a car show this people notice this at least for my uh 76 they always mention wow that looks awesome i mean especially people who who know these cars so just a small detail <laughs> If you're going to try to bring your Corvette's wiper bay to show condition, I have to tell you, you better be prepared to be at it for a week or longer. This is a very time consuming job. There, there is a lot of body work involved, as you can see, and you better have a lot of patience because this is going to take a very, very long time. Let's see if this works. And I have my vacuum pump here. And uh, we'll see if this thing opens and closes with a vacuum. All right, let's give it a shot. There it is. As you can see, uh, it is working. So then when we release the vacuum, that should eventually just, yep. So let's try this again. And it is holding vacuum, so that is that is good. Otherwise, uh, this would be for for nothing here. So there you have it. It works. All right, guys, I've been 
dealing with this little area for like a half an hour. Finally got some of the uh, old silicone seam sealer. Um, this, this is just so hard to remove, but I wanted to clean this as much as possible so I can um, protect it properly. And same, same goes for uh, this plate here, which Okay, so I started by masking the edge of the windshield here. And the reason I want to do that is because I'm going to start prepping this. I'm getting to the point that this is pretty much done. I have to uh, vacuum it again. I finished or refinished a few areas that needed some attention. And it is looking pretty good. Again, there's a lot of stuff and dirt and little pieces of um the uh panel adhesive and and that sort of thing for this area what i'm going to do is i'm going to start masking this area here so i think i'm gonna, and this is just in my head here okay it's subject to uh change i think i'm going to start by painting the firewall area and when this is done I am going to start addressing the finish in here for the wiper bay. And there is a couple of things I wanted to mention. This is going to be painted in place, so I have to protect those threads. I have to mask off most, most of the car, really, because I don't want any of that overspray. It really sticks to the paint, so I don't want to chance it. And this portion here, this lip, is going to be, it's not going to be textured. I am pretty sure I'm going to use the um, semi-gloss satin finish. But anyway, I just wanted to give you that quick update and let's keep on going. So I think first what I'm going to do is I'm going to save some of this plastic. I'm going to trim around here since it's already masked. So I can apply fresh masking tape and have the windshield and this fender protected. So next what I have to do is, I still want to protect the lip, so I'm going to trim some of this plastic and then just fold it over and, and uh, use some masking tape to keep the uh, lip protected. Alright, so I have this masked and uh, what a frustrating experience. I mean, the, I thought I was buying some good quality stuff. Um, so anyway, I'm getting ready to spray this and i protected the uh, lip as best i could i mean the thing kept lifting and it's still still doing the same thing Alrighty, i gave it a few coats of this bed liner spray and i think i got most of it i mean there's only so much room in here to spray so the moment you turn the can upside down you're you're not really spraying a whole lot of material but anyway, I think it looks pretty, pretty good so far. I love this stuff and uh, great coverage. Let's look at the other side. Same deal here. And uh, this is still, still curing. So cannot expect it to be perfect. There's gonna be some splotching and stuff like that that happens while it's drying. But I think it's a heck of an improvement. And I know the light is not the best. But this is all I have so far. And I'm really happy with it. It's, I think it's looking really, really good. Okay, so we're about 35 minutes into this video. 
And what I decided I'm going to do is I'm going to have a part two where I restore the wiper transmission, reinstall all of those components, and then you get to see the finished product, which will make it far more digestible than an hour long video. So in the meantime, stay tuned because I have a, a lot of other uh, things that I'm working on and fixing and restoring. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye.